My name is Chantal. Um, I am in the MD-PhD program and I'm part of the RNA Therapeutics Institute there. I'm in my sixth year overall of the program and hopefully finishing up thesis research this year and heading back to medical school. Um, and I grew up in Brookline, Mass. I'm working on developing therapeutic small interfering RNAs for neurodegenerative disorders. And my specific study for my thesis is to understand the role of apolipoprotein E in the development of Alzheimer's disease with the eventual goal of developing a therapeutic for Alzheimer's. Everyone says that most institutions are collaborative um, and it can feel like a bit of a tired um, statement. But when I interviewed and revisited at UMass, not only were, did they say they co were collaborative, but I could actually see it in action. So each of the PIs in each department knew what the others were doing and working on. They weren't just saying that they worked on projects together, they were actually publishing papers together. Um, and I felt that that was something special and not something that happened at most institutions. And so that for me was really one of the deciding factors of coming here, um, being somewhere with an open door policy where people enjoyed working together. My name is Anastasia Korova and I'm professor at RNA Therapeutic Institute in the Department of Molecular Medicine. What my lab is doing right now, we're developing technologies which enable robust delivery of this type of drugs for many other tissues above liver because liver is soft. And in particular, we have developed chemical scaffolds which give you ability to deliver this type of drugs and modulate expression of the genes or in CNS. And uh, we have a paper published, which actually Chantal Ferguson is a f uh, one of the equally corresponding uh, first co-authors in Nature Biotechnology, and we made it to the cover of the magazine, describing this platform and essentially opening CNS for modulation of gene expression. I'm super excited about the project, Chantal project, which is actually adopting this technology to potentially make a profound changes in diseases like Alzheimer and Parkinson. When you get older, you start to think, what, what do you contribute to this world? What really matters? And yes, you publish a paper, you get a grant, you run a lab, you know, you discover a technology, but I think what really stays long-term, it's impact you have on your trainees' lives, your kids' lives, and your trainees to some degree, it's your professional kids. And uh, when you are entering a relationship of a mentee with a graduate student, it's a long-term relationship and very often it's a lifelong relationship because a PhD is, let's say, four or five, six years minimal when you interact with this particular person more than probably your parents or your kids. And I think seeing the professional growth and the realization of their dreams and seeing that uh, those kids evolve in independent scientists who are much more capable, knowledgeable, successful than I was during the same stage of the career it's extremely fulfilling and clearly you can do only as much as you can do and I think my goal of a mentor is ensure that a personal potential of each trainee it's realized to the fullest. My name is Tomas Rodriguez. I'm a fifth year student in the medical scientist training program here at University of Massachusetts Medical School and I'm from Sacramento, California. My research project uh, has a lot of diverse applications but uh, the, the main focus is developing CRISPR-based tools to study the uh, structure of chromatin. That's the, um, the DNA associated uh, with protein. The university and the associated student groups offer us uh, 
countless opportunities to, to reach out in the community. Um, on the graduate school side, I'm involved in a lot of uh, education at some of the local schools. Um, so we do things anywhere from uh, 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 days where we'll come in and talk about science, uh, to long-term college prep, to SAT prep. Um, on, on the medicine side, we focus more on uh, uh, working with the, the, the medically underserved in Worcester. The, the university has a mission to uh, help those who need it most here in, in the local community. And through uh, the Worcester Free Clinic Coalition uh, and uh, various preceptor sites around the city that, that uh, serve the, the most vulnerable patient populations, I, I think we're able to get a good idea of what the needs are uh, locally and, and work as training physicians to address them. My name is Eric Sontheimer and I'm in the RNA Therapeutics Institute. The general area of research that my lab works on is RNA and uh, gene expression and more recently the more specific aspect of that that we work on is CRISPR interference which is an immune system for bacteria and uh, engineered versions of it that have been developed for genome editing. Mentorship is really one of the uh, biggest perks of the job. Um, being able to uh, interface with students every single day is just such a pleasure. They bring so much youth and energy, and that's true in general. And just watching the progression from a new student through all of the learning process and all of the growth and all of the ups and downs to where they bring a project to completion and publish some good papers and uh, earn their degree is just amazingly gratifying. And that has proven to be just as true for Tomas uh, as for uh, anybody. MD, PhD students in general bring a new and fresh perspective to the lab with their knowledge of the, the medical side of things and not only the basic side of things and that has been uh, really a lot of fun and Tomas in particular has much more of a gift for bioinformatics than I have ever had and so he has brought additional strength uh, into the lab in that area as well and that's to the benefit of the entire group not just uh, not just his project in particular.